can't be hard. Let's hope not. I think probably it took me quite a long time to realise it was science. Um, there's probably taking things apart was my big thing. There's an old uh, cine film that my parents took of me disassembling the cine film microphone. Um, and I think from then on they realised that I was going to be doing something like that. Um, then I thought it was going to go down the engineering route. Um, I'd, done all, I'd done all the sciences when I was at school. Um, and then I'd gone to a university, to Reading actually, to look at engineering and ended up walking past the physics department and I saw some people working in the physics department and I thought actually that's what I do rather than the engineering. I don't want to just do it, I want to know why I'm doing it. Um, and that's how I ended up in physics, but it's always been taking things apart really, <laughs> really I suppose. It was just, I was at that sort of age, five or six, when your parents like to take cine films and take these movies of their children expecting them to perform and do dancing and singing and I, I wanted to take, take it apart, I wanted to know why the microphone worked rather than performing for the camera. So perhaps this isn't a good experiment to do, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it really was. It, it was engineering that I thought I, thought I was going to do. Um, it seemed to be a nice combination of things. And then I went to look at what engineering really was, and it was a bit of a surprise. Um, and then, then physics happened, and that, that's where it's been ever since. Which, which I suppose was actually a bit of a diversion, because it was medicine that I was always going to do. <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah, this has is, this is backtracked a little bit, hasn't it? What's, uh, what's medicine? Um, yeah, medicine. I wanted to be a pathologist for years, years and years in between, um, until, until I discovered engineering. I wanted to do pathology. Um, and then it seemed, when, you, when you're young, and then I looked into pathology, and then it's seven years before you can actually do your real job, and that seemed like a really long time. But I suppose I've been doing this five years now, and want to do some more, and it doesn't seem like a long time once you've actually started doing it. But that just seemed like too much. Cool, yeah. Physics, I suppose, is always the answer. Um, and then I'm doing a PhD in physics. And then it, it goes on if, if they haven't run away by then. Um, take me to that next level. Then. Take you to the next yeah. level, OK. So um, I measure pressure in rocks using MRI. So, so the goal then of the project is, is really for the, for the oil industry. Um, the majority, talking 70-80% of the oil that's available um, on the planet is trapped inside sandstones. Um, and so they're flowing uh, water through the rock to try and drive the oil out of it rather than it just appearing magically when they drill into it. Um, at the moment, the majority of the work which they do is sort of simulation and modelling and they do some small scale experiments, look at what comes out and then try and model what happened in between. Um, the danger of that obviously is that you don't know if it's true. So from the very, very, very fundamental level, we're looking at fluids flowing through rocks. Um, and to make it easy, we don't use real rocks, we use glass mock-ups of rocks which are, are essentially like rocks, but they're clean. Um, and then we just drive water through and we try and measure the pressure of the water as it flows through. And you, I mean, as you flow the water through, the end where it comes in normally has a really high pressure. And then the end where it comes out, there's, it's just like being in the atmospheric pressure. And then there's a gradient in between. And that, that's what we, we measure. And we've measured it once or twice. Really, I like to try and do as many different things as I can. Um, perhaps I've got a short attention span, I don't know. Um, at the moment, probably the main um, other activity which I'm doing is working with Mike Newton um, and building some oscillator circuits for some of the work which he does with uh, crystal oscillators for sensing applications. So they look at um, putting various different liquids on quartz crystals. Um, and then it changes the, the natural resonance of the crystal. 
but to do that you need to know what the natural resonance is. So we're building various different circuits to, to actually try and sort of build these little sensors. Things I like most are probably meeting new people through it. Um, it's not something really that anyone ever tells you when you're looking at going into a career in science. They don't say, oh wow, it's really good, you're going to meet loads of new people. Um, but I think it's the thing that I've been surprised by the most and that I enjoy the most is you go to these conferences and there's all of these really interesting people to talk to, um, the majority of whom are really interested in sharing their work. Um, and it's just really nice to have a chat with them, share your ideas, talk about different things. Um, and you end up often going to really odd, odd sort of ideas just, just by having an, a chat over a coffee with someone that you've never seen before. Um, I think that's what I like the most. And then the thing that I like the least is not having infinite resources because then you come up with these fantastic ideas that you've spoken to someone, come back all excited and then realise that the one thing that you need to do it costs half a million pounds and then, and then you can't you just have to drop it. Um, and that's the thing that I dislike the, the most, I would say. Um, obviously, long-term goal in the next 12 months is handing in my thesis. Um, oh, that's, that's the big thing. Um, but to a certain extent, I'm trying not to think about it too much at the moment. I need to get the experimental work finished. We've got another three weeks um, to finish the experimental work um, on, the, on the scanner. That is obviously not another three weeks from now. <laughs> that would be very scary. Um, so there's three more experimental weeks to finish. Then there's a conference in Toronto, which is a medical conference, which I'm hoping to present work at. I've submitted um, an abstract a couple of weeks ago for that. So I'm waiting to hear from that. I suppose that's the next big thing, is hearing back from that. Um, I'm halfway through writing a paper um, on the last bit of work which we've just finished, um, which we're hoping to submit by the end of the month. So that, that's another big thing coming. There's another conference after the medical conference, which is more the sort of oil recovery type field. Um, and that's a conference that's, that's dedicated in looking at things that are porous. Probably as a scientist, I'm obliged to say there is no stereotypical scientist, but there is, and he does wear a, a white coat, and he does have mad hair and thick milk bottle glasses, um, and there are a few of them, and they are work-obsessed really are work obsessed but more and more now I think people are trying to not be stereotypical scientists um, particularly in sort of the young fields like MRI there are a lot of youngsters in it because I mean it, it's not been around very long it's only sort of 20 years 25 years it, that it's been going um, and I think to a certain extent that makes it a bit less stereotypical You know, I've never thought about it. I've always been so sure I was going to do something science related. Yes, that I've or, yeah, he is, isn't it? A musician. <laughs> Probably. I don't, I don't think I could do an office job 